So a while back, uh, I bought this uh, timer thing on the web just to play with. And uh, people like the video. It's got like 1,300 views. It shows how to hook the timer up better than a lot of other videos do. But uh, that timer is really not very useful for a lot of things. I mean, it does one thing well, and that's, you know, time and switch between re uh, two different circuits. Um, this is an Arduino microcontroller. And it's called the development board or a prototype board, and uh, it's kind of cool. Um, this is on uh, a development plate. I bought it with a kit. Kit, I don't know, a while back. And uh, you know, I've done a lot of stuff with it. It's kind of fun, but you can't really put this in a project. So I got this guy. I bought a few of these on eBay, three or four bucks. Lighting's crap, so, you know, sue me if you like. Um, but these are really, really useful boards. Um, but they're kind of large and annoying, if you know what I mean. So I started using these guys, um, two of the same boards. This one I soldered on these uh, connectors on the sides so that I could attach wires. And they go off to the side because that way... It's just easier to hook the wires up and the board doesn't fall over. This is called uh, a Pro Micro or Pro Mini, something like that. There's a couple of different kinds. This one does not have a USB communications attached, so I have to go through here with a uh, USB adapter. So this guy, hang on, plugs into the board like that, right? And then I can communicate with the board and tell it what to do. All kinds of cool stuff. Yay. And then when I want to make something, I just go back to this one and I solder wires directly to the board. Program it and I'm all set. This guy is a DigiSpark uh, ATTNY85 or something. And I really like these. They plug directly into a USB port. No funky serial port you know, stuff going on. Yeah, but they've got only a very few input outputs. The side over here is power. So what is this? Six input outputs. I hooked one up as a development board with these connectors again. And uh, so there's some microcontrollers. So what can we do with a microcontroller? Well, I'm going to talk about it. I'm actually going to replicate or do a project that somebody was talking about on my FRM01 uh, video, which is turning a valve on and off for a period of time. So hang on, we'll get to that. Okay, I went and grabbed a couple of pieces. Uh, this is uh, one of those cheap char cell phone chargers you get on eBay. And uh, so I take that, stick it right here, take my prototype board, and uh, just kind of stick it in the end there. So there we are. There's my prototype board stuck in the end of this. Now the board's on. Now let's take and just shove whoop, this guy in right here in the right holes. And there we go. Whoop, there we go. It's working. And if you can see in the video, the LED is just a tri tricolor and it's sitting there changing colors. It's kind of hard in this lighting to see. Let's get some shadow. Maybe that helps. So there we can see a little bit better. So that's kind of why I like these prototype boards. They're easy to check out and easy to play with. And you just plug stuff into them and power and easy to program. So I love these DigiSpark boards. As long as I don't need too many input outputs, they're great. Okay, so this is a circuit set up so that the microcontroller will set off a timer at the point when we push a button, right? So this relay right here is going to turn on this voltage detector, which is running on 12 volts. We could hook, instead of a, a voltage meter, we could hook up a valve or anything we want. This is an Arduino Uno controller. This is a breadboard with a button. We could solder this all in, right? But what we're going to do is we're just going to push the button, 
Now, for 15 seconds, this guy is going to go off. And it doesn't matter if we hold this button and we push it down a couple more times. It's still going to take 15 seconds for this cycle to complete through here because that's what we wrote in the program. And then for five seconds, it won't matter if we push the button, right? But now five seconds is over, so we can push the button again, right? We could actually hold this button down or push it a bunch of times, and it won't matter, right? Because the um, controller doesn't care what the button state is at this point, right? It's just going through this. Now, once that last five seconds has passed, we can press it again and run the cycle again. Okay. So the way this is hooked up, I'm using this relay board, right? And I have a voltage coming in. I come back over to here on the Arduino, and the Arduino is running off of pin 5, which I set for high, and pin 4, which I set for low, for ground, and then pin 3, which I set to low, and when I push the button, that pin goes high, like so, right? You have to pit, hold the button down for longer than a second, because that's the way I programmed it. Now... The way this switch is hooked up is I have the positive going to 5 volts from the Arduino. I have the ground going to the breadboard here. Right? I have a resistor between the ground and the button. I have the button. And then I have a wire here that goes from <coughs> into uh, digital input 9. <coughs> which I set up in the code to be a digital input. So there we go. And let's see, would this cost a buck for this relay, 5-volt relay on a board, right? Uh, whatever we hook up here, it doesn't matter. It could be anything. Uh, then, uh, you know, the button wiring, probably a buck resistor. And then the Arduino board, which was three or four bucks. Um, so there you go. I'll uh, post a code underneath the video. Thanks.